The, the national context, which Hardy will talk about in just a minute, is really clear that in terms of the NHS five-year forward view, there is an absolute license and a mandate to start to move towards accountable care systems. But it has to be seen in the context of where we start from, which is the, the infrastructure, the governance that we have at the moment, where we have commissioners and we have providers and we have local authorities, all of which have their own governance, absolutely has to stay in place and will continue to stay in place as we go on this journey. So there's a license there and some of the issues that we've tried to work our way through is how do we manage those governance uh, systems which on occasions appear to be conflicting. So when we talk about an accountable care system, we have three very clear aims and they absolutely tie back to what the STP is about. The first is to seek to reduce those inequalities that were touched upon. And in Kent and Medway, they are really very stark. Depending upon where you live and where you are born in Kent and Medway, there is every chance you'll have a 20-year difference in your anticipated lifespan, and that's huge. So we set out to try and build a structure that would address that. Again, as referred to in the STP, there are some really very good pockets of high quality care and we owe a debt of loyalty and gratitude to the teams who work in the system that deliver that, but we have variation. And one of the ambitions was to significantly reduce that variation. And then finally to the third theme that was touched upon in terms of the STP, we need to deliver the sustainability by improving the efficiency and the affordability and the value for money, because again, we know that there are significant variations. So those were the three ambitions that we set out. The most important of these concentric circles is the one in the middle, the very centre, which is about a person, not a patient, about a person. So what we look to do was to build out from the needs of the person and the patient. And an absolutely pivotal building block around this is what we call in Kent and Medway local care. And it's called different things in different parts of the country. But it's around a system that wraps around the patient to make sure that if they fall ill, we pick them up. And as much as we possibly can, we keep them out of big, expensive, acute hospitals. And that's the ambition. We then move another concentric circle out towards integrated provision. And I'll draw upon the experiences that we've had in East Kent in just a moment, but there's a lot of provision and there's a lot of very high quality provision. And then the wrapper around that in Kent and Medway is to have two, the proposal is to have two accountable care partnerships where all of the partners would come together and find the system and the services that would wrap around the patient. And then in Kent and Medway, we have that outer circle, which is to have a single strategic commissioner bringing together health and social care for the whole of Kent and Medway. And that's how we're building the system. The configurations are subject to debate, and there's an ongoing, and it's an important and a healthy debate, but where we think we will land, subject to the conclusion of those conversations, is, as I say, a single strategic commissioner for Kent and Medway, and to have two accountable care partnerships. One over on this side, which is to the east, which will, in, which will incorporate the four clinical commissioning groups that operate in East Kent, and there's already some cohesion. And one to the left, which is uh, the best title that we can get to, is it's the rest of Kent, because everything else is just too difficult and too slipstream. But that would also incorporate the four clinical commissioning groups that operate across the rest of Kent. So we'll have natural patient flows, and there are nat natural patient flows that would operate across those two systems. You have to have clarity in this world about what your strategic commissioner will do and what the uh, accountable care partnerships will do. And the most important, and that's why I've listed it at the top, is there's a significant role for a strategic commissioner about ensuring that the patient voice is heard. There will be absolute responsibility for the overall direction of strategy and population health. In due course, and I'll go onto the time scale in a moment, there will be a debate about where the contracts are held. So we'll have an accountable care system that will hold contracts from the centre and out to the ACPs. The centre will also allocate the funds based upon population need, a piece of work in place at the moment. Um, and the likelihood is that there will be some commissioning of services across the whole of Kent and Medway that is best done at a Kent and Medway level. They'll also have that accountability for integration of health and social care. And finally, they will regulate the overall system. So that's what happened in that outer concentric circle. 
In terms of what's going to happen in accountable care partnerships, again, the priority is to ensure that the voices of patients and of staff are central to those discussions. It will be a partnership, a genuine partnership of the parties who deliver and who commission health and social care. And one of the key determinants in terms of why we've landed with this configuration is it needs to be big enough to take on the responsibilities and the accountabilities for whole populations and natural populations. And it really needs to work hard to develop the integrated providers. We have some success around that in parts of Kent and Medway, but it's not uniform. And then the, just the two final things is to align the strategy and to shift the resources. So that's what the ACPs will do. What are we looking to do over the next period? And I'll go to a timeline in just a minute, but we have to make that final decision about what a single strategic commissioner would be and what it would look like. Uh, we need to decide ultimately about the number of ACPs, but as I say, I think it's two. There's a really important role for system leadership and development. The, the thing that strikes me about the work that we've done in East Kent is that the way that we operate at the moment doesn't work, and I'm a part of that system, I have responsibilities, and what we need to do is to change the way that we work into a partnership model, a much more collaborative model, and that's going to take time, it's going to take capacity, but it's a really important objective. There is a debate which uh, others from clinical commission groups have very cited upon in this room, which is about we need to change how we commission at the moment into a new model and a change model. And there's a real imperative to the question that came earlier about integrating health and social care, because at the moment there's some good pockets, but there's some that are not so good. So in terms of the timeline that falls from that, People will be aware that the case for change was published in March of this year and just go down some of these keys, I won't touch upon all of them. Significantly and with a great deal of hard work from a lot of people in this room for which I'm grateful, uh, last month we signed off in principle to have an accountable care partnership in East Kent. By the end of this calendar year we'll complete the transition process. From the beginning of next year we'll be in shadow form and then from the beginning of the year after i.e. April 19, we believe that we'll be in a place in terms of having those contracts and the fully worked up strategic commissioner.